Today in the smuggler's room, it's all about. Oh, shh. Today is all about Star Trek. April Fools. <music> Greetings, you amazing nerds. I'm Brian with a Y. And this is apparently the Smuggler's Room. This week, Starfleet Command has instructed me to take over the Smuggler's Room, exercising their rights under Section 8, Paragraph 211, Line 5, which doesn't exist in the Star Trek universe in any way. Needless to say, we are taking over the Smuggler's Room and we're going to build a Star Trek communicator. This project, as with all those in the Smuggler's Room, will not be screen accurate in any way, shape, or form. That said, it will be heavily influenced by the communicator seen in Star Trek Discovery. Okay, first things first. Uh, computer, please play Swagger Stagger by Lucas Pittman. Computer. What do you mean there's no computer? I find the lack of a computer to be completely illogical. Wonderful. Thank you, robot. Please play Swagger Stagger by Lucas Pittman. Sorry, droid. I see, droid. Star Wars fans. For this build, we'll require a base unit. In this case, an antiquated 21st century D-Link DWL-G650 wireless notebook adapter. And some styrene. Now that we have our flip cover, we need a primitive device to act as a hinge. I've rummaged through the smuggler's assortment of garbage to find a sufficient part to achieve this. Now we need to heat our styrene and form it into a hinge. Careful as not to burn our hands. No doubt I would not receive proper medical care in a facility like this. There's likely the chance they would simply remove my hand with a laser sword and replace it with robotics if it's damaged. we will remove the unwanted and outdated identification marks with a combination of heat and WD-40 to reveal a clean surface below. This particular communication device has several perforated holes in the cover and we will as well provide that element by measuring and intersecting points and carefully drilling out each hole with equal care by a twisted drill bit. For our communication center, we will install a blank of styrene, plastic cap, and a previously cut piece of acrylic that miraculously fits without effort.
Additionally, it appears from the reference material we need three small interface buttons. I was able to find three small wheels in the smuggler's model kit part that I suppose will work for this situation. Although, I will be leaving a note for him to upgrade his selection for the future. This will serve as a backplate to provide another layer to our overall look. Paint booth. Please provide a layer of gray primer followed by an all-clad layer of gunmetal, and then please finish off with a satin sealer. Paint booth. Of course it's manual. And it's filthy. Of course he likes it that way. Star Wars fans. Certainly in my haste to complete my mission and return to Starfleet Command, I attempted to finish the communicator with Gold Leaf Rub and Buff. This turned out, however, to be the wrong application, as it is a wax and not a true paint. I was left with a less than desirable finish, so I carefully sanded the flip portion of the project and painted it with Vallejo Metallic Paint Gold, and I used the Smuggler's Airbrush, which is in desperate need of a clean. All in all, lesson learned. Though the smuggler has much to be learned when it comes to the taste in science fiction franchises, he did succeed in partnering with a most pleasant mate. His wife Carissa was kind enough to assist me in adding the final details, albeit a little confused. She seemed to think she knew who I was, but was perplexed by my attire, which I see nothing wrong with. All in all, my fellow nerds, I feel this to be a successful prop. And now I feel more than a little ready to return to Starfleet. This is one red shirt crew member that intends to return from this mission alive. One to beam up. Live long and prosper.